So, Congresswoman, you were one of the leaders of a news conference yesterday, uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, with you, uh, former Fox anchor Gretchen Carlson, and others, talking about the issue of sexual harassment mm-hmm. and how it's dealt with in the Congress. Should John Conyers have resigned? Well, I, I, I think when we look at this, we've got to look at it in its totality. We've got members of Congress um, who are sexual harassers. And there are, yes, there are different levels of that. Um, but if you're in Congress, you ought to be, you know, a role model for, for people back home. Um, you ought to keep your hands to yourself <laughs> when, mm-hmm. it, when it comes to uh, the, the congressmen who have interns or um, aides, legislative aides or chiefs of staff or um, other members of Congress. We really do. This, this term zero tolerance is, is I think, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's out there every day. But, but we ought to be better than um, having any level of sexual harassment in our offices. And um, I, I think if, um, you know, it's time to go if, uh, if that's your practice. Uh, so that's a yes on Senator, on Congressman Conyers? And it's not just Congressman Conyers. Um, well, I was going to ask you, should, should uh, Senator Franken resign? And I think we're going to hear about that today. But, but what I've said on this is, is whether you're a, a senator, a House member, if you've been here 20, 30, 40 years, or if you've been here one year. Um, if you have engaged in sexual harassment, um, this is not the place to be. You know, we, we have come to a moment where women in politics are having a moment, right? You look at the Hillary Clinton, the first female to lead a major party ticket uh, last year. And one of the things that we don't really spend a lot of time talking about when it comes to this is so many young women who get into government work as an intern or as an aide or something like that. And they immediately come to the Hill and then are treated like this, not just by Conyers and Franken, but like by a lot of people. It's been accepted for so long here. And that can really ruin somebody's view of this profession, right? They can, they'll get out of it. They'll go to somewhere else. They'll get out of that office. They'll go to another office. They'll find a different outlet that they can go to and work that way because like, the point is, everybody deserves to be treated equally in that scenario. And I can't even imagine the number of people who have gotten out of politics because they were treated like that. I'm, I'm sure we have lost some of our best and brightest sure. as, as a result of this. Yeah. And, and that's um, every well, single uh, career. Yes, it is way. not okay. unique to Congress. Right. I, I've had three uh, different careers in, in my life. I've been I was a journalist for um, you know close to two decades. I worked in healthcare for a decade. Now I've been out here for five years. And um, I, it, it happens in every profession. Yeah. But, you know, we, we have to, as, as members of Congress, in the, the legislation that we introduced yesterday. I was going to ask, so what are you calling for to kind of improve the system, well, and, and, get better accountability? Yeah, so our, our bill, um, it, it, <laughs> it talks about what happens in the workplace and how it is handled when there are allegations of sexual harassment. Right now there are 60 million Americans who when they uh, start a job, they're signing off on paperwork. It might, you might go to the human resources department. It might be your boss saying, hey, you got to sign all this before you get your paycheck. It might be simply handing an employee uh, the employee handbook. That is an acknowledgement for 60 million Americans that if they have um, a concern, if they have been sexually harassed um, by signing that or being simply handed the employee handbook, they're saying that this cannot go to court if you have an allegation that it has to be handled through an arbitration process. And so here's how that works. The company will hire the arbitrator, so it is the company mm-hmm. paying for that person. Um, you cannot appeal whatever decision is made by that arbitrator. And um, about 82, 82% of the time, that employee is going to lose in that arbitration process. Um, so what our uh, legislation does that we introduced yesterday, it will give the employee the choice if they want to go to court um, that they can do that. And by the way, also under this arbitration process, you've got to keep your mouth shut mm-hmm. if you are the victim of this sexual harasser. Right. It, it is how this serial sexual harassment has happened in companies um, that, for instance, the Washington Post reported earlier this year about uh, the company that oversees K Jewelry. Um, and Jared Jewelry, the, and, and there are 69,000 current or past employee or employees of that company who have said that they have been a, the victim of sexual harassment, 69,000. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And, and this has been going on allegedly now, is this, but is for this, decades. Is this, 
Is this across the board, every every company, every corporation? Many corporations. To the tune of more than half of the workforce has signed their rights away. Um, so uh, what's, what's important about this legislation we introduced is we've got now bipartisan support. It's the same bill. Uh, Senator Gillibrand's the lead in the, in the mm -hmm. Senate. I am the lead in the House. Um, but we've got to work this very hard. And, and for do your, you have Republican support? We do. And in, in fact, I have to say I was very proud of Senator Lindsey Graham, who went to our news conference yesterday. He mm -hmm. went up to the microphone and he said, this is a shout out to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. As the business leaders, you need to get behind this. There should be no tolerance for sexual harassment. There should be no cover cover up for sexual harassment in the workforce. And okay. I was very proud of him for saying that. Now, what about the process in the United States Congress? Um, it's messed up. You know, and, and we have legislation to address that, too. The fact that $17 million has been paid out to the victims of sexual harassment, um, if not worse, because it's all been secret, Bill. Right. Um, so we don't we don't know who what offices this has come out of. Um, we don't know exactly what the um, the charges have been because it's all been done in secret and it's taxpayer dollars that have paid for this. Now I was reading this morning that for, in the in the House I believe and the Senate um, that the Speaker doesn't know which char which members have been uh, which members have been subject of uh, sexual harassment claims you know against him. The Speaker doesn't know. Um, the members of the Ethics Committee, not all the members of the Ethics Committee even know. It is really, really kept in the dark, and they don't know what claims were made, how much money has been paid out, and who these members are. I mean, that should all be yeah, public, shouldn't yeah. it? So allegedly the $17 million is from different causes. It, it, some is sexual harassment. Some might be other things. We don't know because it's all been done in secret. I, I kid you not, we also have three different places that somebody who has been sexually harassed can go to. And it's not clear, like, if, right now, if, if I wanted to, to uh, if, I, if I were sexually harassed, I wouldn't know where to go right. um, yeah. in Congress because it is so convoluted, so secret. And you remember, and it, imagine staffers or interns, they wouldn't know what the hell to do. Right? It, it, exactly. It, it, we've, we've got to fix this. We've got to be transparent about it. We have to put a stop to it, and we have to hold any sexual harasser accountable. Congress has got to lead the way because what, what you what yeah, you mentioned yeah. there is not. I mean, that's how a lot of companies are. We read more and more stories about like the restaurant industry, think, right? There are restaurants where women. I mean, I think we yeah. can all agree that restaurant industry is sort of a male dominated mm -hmm. industry, and there are women who feel like they were sexually harassed or sexually assaulted. And there were companies they worked for that didn't even have an HR department, had nowhere for them to go, no one to report it to, and if Congress doesn't even have anything like that. Imagine how everybody else is. Yeah, we, we've got to fix it. Um, and, and for taxpayers to be paying no, for these no. congressmen's oh, no. behavior. Oh, you know, right. the Blake Farenthold uh, yeah. story that All came right. out, $84,000 yeah, in taxpayer right. dollars was paid out to um, the victim of his sexual harassment. Okay. Uh, and John Conyers paid, what, 20, whatever, 13 or 20. I forget what the number was. I but, think that uh, was 27000 But 20. that was under a whole different... Uh, system too. shell game. But, yeah. so I wanna, yeah. It was I a shell game. I want to ask you about that though. Yeah. So, uh, um, when when with Congressman Conyers, it took a couple of days still. But Leader Pelosi, Leader Steny Hoyer, Leader James Clyburn said, "Mr. Conyers, you, you know we love you, but this is wrong. Mm -hmm. You ought to step down." Mm -hmm. Blake Farenthold pays out eighty four thousand dollars. Have you heard Paul Ryan uh, call on Congressman Farenthold to step down? Mm -hmm. And if not. Why he Ryan did call on Congressman Conyers to step down. Why is it okay for Republicans and not for Democrats? It's not okay. It is not okay. And the, and, and Paul Ryan should do the right thing, and um, hold his, the member that's in his party accountable, just like he um, was was holding Mr. Conyers accountable. Um, you know, there, there's that's not different from that perspective. Again, we are we are so fortunate to be serving as members of Congress, that, that people from our home districts have um, elected us to come out here. And, and we need to start winning back the trust and doing the right thing. And, and it, you know, when you look at what's going on in Alabama. I was just going to say, what we does... we got a pedophile running for the U.S. Senate. Right. What, 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 what happened? What did, what, what's the impact on the movement, the Me Too movement, if we can call it that now, if Roy Moore were elected senator from Alabama? Well, anybody listening from Alabama, do you have Alabama listeners to your program? 
Uh, yes. Okay. We do, actually. Well, yes, we do. you know, let, yeah. let, let's hope that they go um, in on, on the, the day that they're casting their vote and say, we deserve better than this. Uh, the nation deserves better than this. We are not going to elect a man um, who is a pedophile. And that is what he is. If you are a 30 some year old man um, and you are uh, going after a 14 year old girl, and these allegations are cre- totally. entirely credible. I've, I've read the stories that have been out there, the breaking story. Um, and you know, why, why would you support somebody like this? I don't care if it's a Democrat or a Republican. Um, it, it, this is this is something that doesn't you, you don't apply, um, mm. you know, that you're a Democrat, you're a Republican. So you're better because you went after a 14 year old. It's just wrong. Ivanka Trump maybe said it best. There's a special place in hell for people who prey on children. Terrible thing. Hey, Congressman, it's always good to see you. We've covered a lot of territory today. Thanks so much. Thank you.